Hi, I'm Bob from Hawktwork Hardware and this is the first in a series of videos where we're going to look at taking this old organ console behind us here and converting it into a MIDI console useful for either Hawktwork or other virtual organ software. Uh, this console came from a school in London and was originally controlling a pipe organ um, so inside it's going to be wired differently to the other organs that we've looked at in the past. So we're going to hopefully take the thing apart, see what's inside, see what we need to do um, and then go through a complete renovation because uh, it's in quite poor condition um, as you'll see in a minute. So we hope to renovate the thing completely and get it all working as a nice MIDI console. So join me as we unbox the console and see what's inside um, and see what we're going to do with it and how. So at first glance uh, we can see that this console is a two manual um, full pedal board organ. The uh, pedals are at the back there which you can probably see at the back of the workshop. Uh, we'll deal with those later. Um, it's got a number of thumb pistons, uh, a whole bunch of um, stop tabs at the top here which appear to move, whether they do anything else, no idea, but we'll figure that out later. Uh, it's got a nice uh, row or selection of toe pistons, which will get working. Um, it's got the original on-off panel at the, at the side there, which would have been used to control the motor for the blower. Uh, and then on the other side there's the maker's plate, so that's telling us Rushworth and Dreeper, uh, Liverpool, 1964. So it's quite well travelled. Um, it's got these drawers here with all the different setter controls. Um, I don't know whether to keep these or not, what use they'd be, um, whether they could be used for halt work or not, or for a virtual organ. There's a similar arrangement this side, they're quite stiff. Um, they may be able to be used, I'm not sure. Uh, if anyone knows of a use for those you know, within Hawk's work, um, you know, what do you guys think? Should we wire them up? Should we make them do something? Or should we just remove them um, and leave the spaces here? Maybe for something like an Ovation launch pad? Um, don't know. Put your answers in the comments below. I'd like to know what people think I should do with those. Um, in the meantime, uh, it's it's been left over winter uh, in the in my garage here in the workshop uh, and it's grown this lovely green fur all over it as you can see so first thing to do is to um, put on a mask because uh, it, it kind of comes off in clouds when you touch it so I'm going to put on a mask and, and try and brush that off and hoover it up a bit uh, and then once we've got rid of that we'll take the top off and have a look inside um, I've already removed the um, the sort of tambour uh, rolling top, that's uh, just behind it down there. That's all broken um, and it's kind of falling off or falling to bits so I thought it easier just to remove that at the beginning. Um, we can probably repair it, it's just the wires through the centre have broken. Um, so without further ado uh, I shall give this thing a bit of a clean up and um, see what we're going to do next. Uh, the other thing is these keys obviously they've gone mouldy as well but they some of them kind of stick um, so we're going to need to look at how we're going to fix that fix these key beds. Uh, they're proper wooden key beds. Um, some of the plastic tops uh, you can see the lines here um, looks like someone's repaired this before badly uh, but there's another crack here. So we'll look at getting those repaired as well and see if we can get the thing into a playable condition. So let's get it cleaned up and see where we go. Okay, so the next thing is uh, I'm just going to give it going over with some hot water soap and a a cloth uh, just to get rid of any of that dust. Uh, I haven't done the whole thing, I've only done the bits we're going to be working on, the sides and, and the back's hard to get to so not going to bother with those for the moment, we'll just move those out of the way in a minute, well back anyway, so give it a going over with some hot water. Okay so it looks a bit better after it's cleaned up, uh, the nice layer of blue fur is gone um, and I haven't cleaned all of it, just the bits that we're going to be working on as you saw in the speeded up bit, um, well hopefully anyway if that bit works and I put it in. Um, so the, the keyboards definitely need attention um, when they've been cleaned up you can see there's more damage than, than I'd noticed really, that one seems to be cut in two as does that and that. So uh, I'm going to look at getting those key beds out and getting those restored. Um, 
But the next thing we're going to do is we'll, we will remove the uh, top here and then we'll remove the music rest in its bracket and we'll pop the back off, we'll swing it round and we'll see what's inside. Okay, so this is the rear view of the console uh, on that other side there. I've removed the top um, and the back's held on just by these small bolts in here, um, just like little door bolts. Uh, there's this end it's missing, um, so this whole back part will just lift out. Um, so I'm going to lift that off and get that out of the way. Uh, so I can't hold the camera whilst I do it, so I shall turn it off for a second and we'll come back when it's removed. Okay, I've removed the back, um, but just one quick little tip uh, that I found if you decide to do any of these yourself. Um, I've put it onto these little wooden dollies with four uh, wheels on. Uh, and I've just popped some little screws in there as well so it can't fall off. They make it very much easier to move around because this took four, four of us to lift it off the lorry into here. It is phenomenally heavy. Um, and I've just put one on either side um, and screwed them on. And they're really cheap actually. They came from, I think it was either Tool Station or Screw Fix, and they were about 20 quid for a set of two. Um, so save your back and get yourself some of those and just screw them on. So, coming round to the rear of the organ now, um, see how easily we can push it about on those wheels. But we have got um, we've got these stop tabs, um, which appear to be motorised stop tabs, which is nice. Um, they're all along the front there. Uh, wasn't sure what that is, but I think it's just a roller for the um, for the tambour cover. Uh, we've got our key beds in here, obviously, and then. Underneath uh, we've got our contacts, which I don't know if you can see there very well. Um, then we've got these mystery boxes either side. Uh, they've probably got some little relays in or something. There's a big one in the centre. Uh, it's probably a relay box as well. Um, then we've got these big switches, relays, down the bottom here. None of which we're going to need. So all this is going to come out. Um, and all that wiring and everything else. Uh, just leaving us with the stops, the key beds, the contacts, the pedal contacts along the bottom um, and possibly these, um, these set of switches depending if we decide to keep them. So I'm just going to remove these covers now, see what's inside these boxes uh, and then look at removing the key beds so that we can get those sent off for renovation. Okay, so as expected, these boxes do in fact contain uh, more relays. Um, these look almost like um, sort of pallet magnets really, uh, that have just got a little bar across the end that operates on these switches, um, same switches as normally used on the keyboards. Uh, exactly the same arrangement along here, we've got a, a whole load of them. Um, and then there's another three that were in that box at this end. So we don't need those, they're going to come out. Um, there's another box down here, which I'll open up in a second, that's probably got more relays in it. Um, and so I think what I'll do next is actually to remove this, uh, this front here with the music rest on it, because that's quite heavy. Um, and then that'll allow us to, I'll probably just cut this cable, and remove this entire front fascia with the um, motorised stop tabs on it. This wire from what was the motor start is probably already just cut off anyway. Yes it is. So that can pull through. Okay, so that, that's, I'll just cut that off, that can go with the front. And then these wires from the stops as well, I'll cut those. So that'll give us a bit more room and we'll be able to see more about how the um, key beds are hopefully held into the console. Okay, so that gives us a bit more of a, a view of what our key beds are looking like. Um, I'm not certain how those are held in yet, possibly from screws from underneath, not sure. Um, I've cut off the wires from the top keyboard, um, these are the ones for the bottom, just going to cut those off as well. Uh, I'll probably remove this so that we can get in a bit more um, and then have a look up underneath and see if we can work out how to remove those key beds. Just as an interesting aside, uh, I thought I'd include the, these little plastic um, cable clips that we know and love, uh, which we've used for years, um, have actually been outlawed um, in the UK uh, wiring regulations or electrical wiring regulations for 2019. Any uh, new um, designs for um, building wiring um, projects from January 2019, uh, you're no longer allowed to use these. 
uh, you have to use the metal ones um, and it's interesting to note that that's exactly what the, this organ's got here. Um, these are really old, the, the organ was made in 1964 uh, but these, these things which you kind of nail on, put your cable through the middle and then clip them together and they're metal uh, these you have to use now, um, so that's a, an example of technology going full circle I think, um, or at least those in power uh, telling us what to use going full circle. Um, it came to my mind, I saw a video by John Ward um, and, and he was explaining the electrical regs, the latest ones, and he, he mentioned that in there. Uh, but I just thought it was interesting to see that, um, you know, 50, 60 years ago, nearly, uh, or 55 years ago, whatever it is, um, we, we had these things then, and that's what we're back to now. Okay, so I've removed the relay board that was along here, um, and the other relay boards that were at each end um, of the organ, or console. Uh, so we've now got a, a good view of what's underneath, which is these drawers with these uh, set of switches. Um, I'm going to remove those for the time being. Um, they're held in by uh, this bracket here. On, there's just a couple of screws and then that will slide right out of the front. Uh, and then it's the same this side, a little, bra little block with two screws. So I'll remove those, uh, slide those out which will give us a bit more room. Uh, down underneath is the original um, old light bulb uh, mounted up underneath there to, to, so that you can see the pedals. Um, and then I'm going to look at removing all of this assembly, um, this bracket tree with all these great big relays uh, and connection boards because we don't need those either. So we'll come back when that's done. Okay, so we've now removed uh, all of the bits and pieces from the console that we don't need anymore. Um, all of these relays and such, um, these big things down here, we don't need those. Um, I'm not certain whether they actually have a use in life anywhere anymore. Um, I think I'll keep them in one piece, maybe pop them on eBay or something in case there's anyone um, that restores pipe organs to whom they might be useful. I don't know, it seems a shame to smash them up and throw them away. Um, maybe useful for someone. Um, the same with these little ones up here, although I think these are just pallet magnets that have been modified to work with the contacts. Um, but we'll see what we do with those. But back to our console, um, everything's out of the way now. We're left with our two keyboards at the top, um, our light bulb in the middle, and along the bottom we've got the actuators uh, for the pedal switches. Um, the switches are underneath and these, these springs uh, get pushed down by the pedals. And then we've got our tow pistons um, connections underneath here. So that's all pretty straightforward for wiring up for our new uh, purpose for our virtual organ console. Um, these key beds now just lift out. Uh, I couldn't work out what these connectors were for on the side. Uh, until I realised that they're actually for the um, the thumb pistons. Um, the sockets come out anyway, but uh, yeah, they're wired through to the thumb pistons, so um, that makes life easy as well. We can wire those from there. So these key beds now, uh, there were some screws here, um, they just lift up. I don't know if you can see that, uh, but we'll lift those out um, and then they'll be ready for refurbishment. Okay, so that's the end of the first part of our series on this pipe organ console, which we're converting to uh, a MIDI virtual organ console. Um, the keyboards are out and uh, they're in the car ready to go and see the keyboard restorer, see what we can do with those. Um, so in the next part we'll look at hopefully getting the restored keyboards back in, uh, making sure the contacts work and I'm sure some of them won't so we'll have a look and see what we can do about that. Um, check out all of the thumb pistons and the toe pistons uh, and also have a look at these uh, motorized stop tabs here, see if we can get those working, find out what voltage they are, um, just really getting a lot more information about the, um, the console so that we can get everything set up the way we want it to be. Uh, we'll be using the Universal MIDI encoder and interface board for this job. Um, we'll also be using the, um, the decoder 128 because that will drive all of these motorized stop tabs. Um, there aren't really any lights, the, the thumb pistons are not lighted, so it'll just be driving the stop tabs. Um, and that's about it really, so uh, I'll see you in the next part.